we get a CUCM publisher, CUCM subscriber, I am in presence, Windows 2012 directory, and then also a Cisco Unity connection. Hello everyone. In this video, I will be talking about how to get some free study resources from Cisco. You don't need to have a Cisco account or anything. You can just sign up with your email address. I've even tested it by creating a fake email address. Well, not fake. It was a real one, but it wasn't my actual email address. I just went to mail.com, created an account, and then I came back over here to the, the DevNet site, made my own login over here with my new email address. And then it, I, I was able to log in and actually access some of the, the uh, study resources that they have here. I'll even be doing more videos about the study resources on DevNet because they got a ton of great stuff in here. But the video that I'm making right now is specifically geared towards collaboration because I'm making a build your own collaboration CCMP CCIE home lab video series. And in that video series, I got a comment from someone named Stuart Whitaker who's been watching the series and enjoying it. But then I got to the point where I started talking about licensing and having to get your own ISO files. And Stuart raised a very valid point. It's very hard to get this software. And I'd say it's even harder to get it licensed once you get that software. But this video is going to be a workaround for both of those issues. It's going to be a workaround for the difficulty of having to find the software. It's going to be a workaround for the difficulty of getting your software licensed once it's installed. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into how this workaround is going to allow us to study Cisco collaboration products without any cost at all, without any affiliation to Cisco at all. All you need is an email address and you can get started. To get to this page where I am, you can go to developer.cisco.com and then to get to the sandbox, we just choose the option here in the middle which says sandbox. Now while on the sandbox site, we can click on get started with sandbox and it sends us over to get authenticated we can do it with a GitHub account, Google, Facebook, Cisco ID, WebEx meetings, WebEx teams. They really make it easy for this service to be available to people. There's, there's no reason why you can't go and do this. Everybody has one of these things in the list. I'm going to go with login with Google and I'm going to use one of my other email addresses that I have. It's not at all associated with Cisco in any way, but again, it doesn't need to be for you to be able to use this service. Now that I'm signed in, I go directly to this page here, which is Sandbox Labs. That's where they drop us off. Then there's also another tab for reservations. I might have one, I might not. Yeah, no reservations at this moment, that's fine. Let's go back over to the Sandbox Labs tab. I can choose from whatever here, and they're always adding more and more and more stuff here. Actually, this looks pretty cool. I'm going to take a look at the Collaboration tab over here browse in the uh, Browse by Category section. Now here's the problem that I have whenever I go and use this service. I look around at all this stuff and I'm like, man, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to check out this room kit. I definitely want to check out some of this Cisco Broadworks stuff. Um, I want to come back over here to IOT and some cloud things. It, there's really just so much stuff. I want to check out the security, but <laughs> you know, you, you, you can find yourself getting overwhelmed. So uh, it might be best that whenever you go to the DevNet um, site that you, you kind of try to plan out exactly what you're going to do or else you might find yourself spending a lot of time here without making the progress that you want to make. It's better to have a plan and say, you know, maybe actually maybe that's what you can do. Log in here to the DevNet site, take a look around for your first time in, look around at what you want to learn and, and categorize it, put it in order, prioritize it. And then stick to that list of prioritized courses. So that way you don't log into the DevNet um, site and then find yourself in the sandbox, just digging through the sand. And then <laughs> before you know it, you haven't made any of the progress that you meant to make. Anyway, I'm going to go down here to the collaboration 12.5. This is going to be a CUCM uh, presence and voicemail. So we get CUCM, we get IMP, and we get voicemail with this one. I'll click reserve so that I can get my lab. It lets me know to please wait. And I have an option to schedule it. It looks like six hours, requires 15 minutes setup, planned, and blah, blah, blah. Sandbox minimum duration, five days. Oh, that's maximum, maximum duration, five days. I'm going to go with that. We'll go with five days.
I'll leave the name the same and I will leave this sandbox lab what it is. So the sandbox lab is basically, although I clicked reserve over here, it's allowing me to look at the different ones that they have in this drop down menu. So I'll just leave it as, as what it is and then I'll click reserve. Now I think it's going to take a little while for it to actually um, like kind of get spun up. The other reservations that I've made in the past have taken a while, but those, those reservations were a whole lot more stuff there. All right. So now this is, this is the topology. We get a web interface for our topology. We over here see that the setup is estimated to end in 14 minutes. We can see that we get a CUCM publisher, CUCM subscriber, I am in presence, Windows 2012 directory, and then also a Cisco Unity connection. While this install is still going, let's take a look at these different tabs. One of the first things that I think is important to look at right here, developer reserves the lab and receives software VPN access information and credentials via email at the start of the reservation. So I should have an email already letting me know how to access the VPN. Once the VPN is accessible, we'll be able to Telnet, SSH, and, H and use HTTP to access these different uh, applications that we have here for us. Next, I would just jump straight over to the VPN tab. They give you everything you need to know about what you need to do for the reservation. You should go and download the Cisco AnyConnect software, which they give it to you here for Mac and Windows. You should also read the installation guide if you're not familiar with it which this guide is extremely detailed. They really did a great job um, making it easy for people to get in here, have minimal guesswork, and just get to work on what they're here to do. Studying, testing developer tools, whatever it might be, they made it easy for you to just jump in here and hit the ground running. So let's get back over here. And they give us some information about the Cisco Unified Presence APIs, which that's I am in Presence server, and then also the CUCM APIs. With e with each one of these APIs, they give us you know additional resources that we can go look into a little bit more if we wanted to. Actually, this is something that a uh, few people have asked about on my channel, so I highly recommend taking a look at this if you wanted to know more about the Axel APIs. Let's hop back over to the DevNet Sandbox. And again, on the collaboration tab, they give us even more resources. I'm telling you, this DevNet site is just absolutely overflowing with, with great resources. We now have some great news. My session is active. I have four days and 23 hours and 50 minutes left. We'll go ahead and launch my VPN, and then I'll see about going ahead and connecting to these different uh, applications we have here. I'll see if I can connect to the CLI, to the web interface, and then I'll also try to register my, my Jabber client to it. Not only did I get an email when I made the reservation, I also got an email letting me know when the reservation was active. They send you the directions again if you do not have any connect installed on your system. It's going to be the same stuff that we saw in the web interface earlier on the VPN tab. Then they also tell us if you do already have any connect already installed, here's the lab network address for yours. You plug that into the VPN server here. Then you hit connect. Once you hit connect, you plug in the username that they provided and the password that they provided. Then you click OK. Now you can see that the VPN is being established. I am now successfully connected to the VPN for my specific reservation. Before actually being able to connect to any of these devices, you need to know their credentials. So there's, there's more than one way that we can get the credentials. We can go over here to the lab user guide. This lab user guide actually covers a lot of the information that we've already talked about but it also covers some, some information that we didn't discuss just yet. As you can see here, it talks now about the main topology and it talks about different things on the web interface for this sandbox environment. These are some really good things to take a look at and get familiar with. Mainly what I wanted to get down to was this area here where they talk about the different credentials for the different resources. Next, you can see that there's already some configurations on the system. Specifically for Jabber, down here they let us know why that is, and it's because you can uh, be running Cisco Jabber for Windows on the device and connect to the sandbox via AnyConnect, but really um, you can get AnyConnect for Android or the iPad or the iPhone, and I don't see any reason why you can't just put in the AnyConnect uh, remote side, which you get in your email, and then provide your, your username and password, which is also in your email, 
you know, do that on your iPhone, then you should be able to log into Jabber that way. In fact, I'll try that later. But when we scroll down even further, we'll see that there's there's some troubleshooting stuff as well. Now, going back to the sandbox environment, where are you? Here we go. Going back to the sandbox environment, I wanted to show you something that they also have in that uh, lab user guide. You can go here and do view VM details and you get all sorts of different information for the VM. But if you go over to attributes, you can actually see the username and password. Something that I realized is the first go around, it seemed to take a long time to load up. Yeah, as you can see here, at this point, let's go ahead and try to RDP into the Windows server. I'll go over here and say VM details. Once this loads up, we'll go to attributes. We want to copy out this whole, ah, it doesn't let me copy it out. Seriously, what if I do inspect element? Yeah, that'll work out. So I'll just copy this. Now I'll go and launch my uh, RDP client, hit connect and do more choices, use a different account. Then I'll plug in my username with the domain that I just selected. Then for the password, it's uh, Cisco PSDT. And I'll say yes. Let's see what we're working with here. Takes a while to load up, huh? Maybe that's just for the first login. All right, so they give us free free FTPD, which is good, and they give us putty. So we, we can pretty much do everything we want from within here. I wanna see if I can do it locally though. I'll launch MOBA Xterm on my local machine. And then let me try to put in the, the putty information for that lab, 10.10.22, administrator Cisco PSTD. So let's do that, 10.10.20.2. And I believe that was administrator Cisco PSTD. We are able to access this from our local machine. We'll move back over to our RDP session and see what different applications are installed on our Windows server. We already have Cisco Jabber installed here. So that's, that's actually really good because that means that I can register my Cisco Jabber on my, on my own computer. But then I can also launch Cisco Jabber on this Windows server, allowing me to have more than one device registered to the CUCM. And then on top of that, I could even install CIPC on my, my um, local machine. And then I could have Jabber for my local machine registered with CUCM. Then I can also have Jabber on this Windows server here registered, which we can see it's actually already registered as user 03. Let's see what you got. Hmm, that's interesting. Some some uh, old calls here from 2019. And then also I can I can log into Jabber on my on an Android device if I have it on my iPhone, on my iPad. You can get a lot of different devices registered all at the same time to allow you to do some test calls in this lab environment. Let's see if they have Notepad plus plus installed on this. No, it looks like we just got to deal with notepad. That's okay. You could probably just, if you pull logs or anything, let, let's see if I can copy it over to, um, to my local machine. Let's do new file. That's fine. I'll just keep it like that. Then for good measure, I'm going to go up here and open the file and say, test copy to local. We'll save that. Let's make sure that it actually saved. It did. And then I'm going to right click and say copy. Let's open up a directory over here. Paste. Oh man, it looks like it worked. Test copy to local. Awesome. So if you wanted to be able to look at logs, but you don't want to have to use notepad, you want to be able to use whatever is local on your machine, whether it be translator X or notepad plus plus, whatever you choose, you can actually copy it over to your local machine. Then do your analysis there. There's one last thing I want to test before I end out this video. I'm going to go into Google Chrome and we're going to browse to that uh, CUCM. I believe it was 10.10.20.2. Let's go ahead and confirm that while the page is loading or not loading, I guess. 10.10.20.2. Go back to my RDP. Here it is. What I would do is I'd want to add this to my bookmarks. We'll say 
show bookmarks bar and then I'm going to take this and put it down here. Then I would go into properties and where is it? There's got to be a way to change this edit. Yeah, how about that? Here's the name. Let's go back and look at what that name should be. 10.10.20.2 is the CUCM subscriber. I'll go back over to my RDP. CUCM sub. I got that right there. The other thing that I want to do is put it in here, 10.10.20.2. Now I'll put CUCM sub right here. Click save. Now I have that session here. And, and what I would do is I would do this for the IMMP, the CUCM publisher, the Unity connection. I would put all of those here in the putty saved sessions. And then I'd also go back to Chrome and put all of those into the web browser's bookmarks. That way down the road, I don't have to try to go back and reference the uh, documentation for the different IP addresses. I can just you know click on a bookmark or click on a save session and get to work. You'd also probably want to save the credentials for the different sessions somewhere as well but they are fairly straightforward and they all share the same credentials for the most part. So, you know, once you do it a couple of times, you should be good. Then you can get the most of it for the next five days by quickly just getting into things. Now there's one more thing I want to show before I take off and then we're ending the video. Currently I have four days, 22 hours and 48 minutes left. If I go over here to sandbox, I can click on extend and let's see if I can just bump this up one minute. No, it seems to not like that. Sandbox duration, five. Maybe it's because I just got this reservation really not that long ago. Possibly if I waited until there was only one day left, maybe they would let me do the extension. I also don't know if there's any limitation on the number of extensions that, that we can get. Knowing that that's there is of value because it's something that we can test as the time runs down. I think in a worst case scenario, we can do a, a backup of our systems to the Windows server using the free FTBD software that's there, then we should be able to copy those files from the Windows server to our local machine. And then we can do another reservation. It only takes 15 minutes to spin up. Then we can copy our backups back onto the Windows server and try to restore those backups to our systems. At this point, I'm going to end the video. I hope it was of value to people and I'll see you in the next one.